So before we can start doing a job, you need to home your machine. Now it's very simply done in Mark III. Just press REFL. And in Mark III, you'll see that uh, it's referenced now X, Y, and Z in the machine coordinates. Okay, so I've put my piece of material on the bed now, and I've lined it up nice and square. But the, the last job that I used this for, which was machining that um, brass medallion, um, of course, I, I've had the spindle set low down in its holding, so now I've got to raise it back up. So the first job I've got to do now is to set the X and Y zero on this corner here and um, then we'll set the Z with the setting tool. So let's jog over to this corner. We get somewhere close. I've got plenty of material here. This is a hundred millimeters wide, and we're only cutting an eighty millimeter. Piece, so I'll, I'll actually take it onto the material a bit. So we cover everything, and that's 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 fine. So I'm going to set the X and Y zero there, and you've all seen how I do that. So. So now we'll raise it up and move it onto the material here somewhere and we'll um, use the Z height tool setter and that goes something like this And we're ready to go. Okay, so here we go for the spot drill.
Okay, what I'm going to show you now, um, I don't see many people doing this uh, on the internet actually, they don't show you these little little things and that is because the, the travel of this is uh, 90 millimeter, uh, which is just under four inches. Um, so you, to get the, the, the reach of different tools, you need to alter the spindle in its housing, the, the length, and this is how you do it. You slacken off these bolts here, and a good little trick that I've learned over the years, I've got one here somewhere, and that is, uh, let me just move it over to one side, I'm going to show you a couple of little tips now about altering the spindle in its mounting. And um, one of the simple things is you get an odd piece of block of wood and you put underneath the tool. Don't put your fingers under the tool because they sometimes they can be unpredictable and this can sl slide down and this weighs about eight kilos or more and it'll go straight through your finger. So, slacken these off. Okay. Now what I do is I put my hand underneath it there like that. Okay, so the, the chuck or the, the shaft is between those fingers. Okay, you just take the weight of it. And get a screwdriver or something like that. Just in, in, in here and just Wedge it open. A <laughs> bit more. Yeah. Sometimes it can be a little stubborn. Uh, might be a little bit too. That's fine. Because I've got to take into consideration the retraction off this as well. So do it up at that. But notice, never get your fingers underneath it. Do them up firm, do these clamping bolts back up firm, but don't over tighten them because the threads in here are going straight into the aluminium body. And you can strip them. I haven't done it, but I know people that have. Okay, so that tool, let me make sure that tool is tight, sure it is, and that's a six millimeter end mill in there, two flute, so we'll put the next code in and uh, off we go again.
and this resulting mess <laughs> is the only drawback of machining aluminium and certainly cutting parts out um, with a CNC router because it's it's very fine small chips and it sprays it everywhere and it gets all over your machine and I use WD-40 as a cutting agent that's what you see me squirting on there um, I also use air because if you don't clean out the track when it's cutting it out it'll just snap the tool off and you'll also notice during the drilling process I only had this running at 5000 rpm which is the lowest it'll actually cut uh, because you go lower than that and you don't have enough torque uh, in the motor these are sort of high revving and the torque band is quite up high of say from 10,000 up so um, and, and this is a 2.2 kilowatt spindle too so do you think this looks anything like that? <laughs> That's how to cut a piece of aluminium out. So 